elevation. It's more than rap, elevation. More than how your money stack, elevation. Move forward, no going back, elevation. Now where you from, but where you at? I be coming through, bombing shit with no hesitation. Step into this booth, slay this beat like my name was Jason. Domination and preparation led to a new sensation, new creation. That's what you're facing. Now watch my elevation. The next topic we're going to discuss on Boxing Bros is should Berlanga have been disqualified for his Mike Tyson-like moment? Um, I don't have it queued up to show you, but you can look this up. It's probably all over Twitter where Berlanga actually attempts to bite um, Roma and Gulo. And, you know, he was able to finish the fight. So I'm starting off with G again on this one. G... Uh, what's your reaction to that? And should Belinga have been disqualified? All right, this is it sounds crazy what I'm about to say, but y'all gotta walk with me at the time of when it happened. No, but I would have gave him a stern warning, and I would even respect it if the, the ref removed the point. However, at the end of the fight, when he was talking uh, about it. To me, he like made a joke about it. Like, yeah, you know, I was like, yo, I'm about to Mike Tyson this dude and bite him. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what is going on here? You know? So like, it's tough. Yo, know, so to me, it's always about intent. His intention seemed that was deliberate. And when it's deliberate, you got to get disqualified. That's of course it's deliberate, bro. You can't accidentally bite someone. Nah, you know, like in the heat of the moment, it could be like, all right. You know, like kind of like when dudes get frustrated and they throw a low blow, like some referees would be like, yo, chill out. Or another referee would be like, ah, right, you're losing a point. You know, it all depends on, it's on the discretion of the ref, right? So it's like, I, and I think that weighs in a person's mind. Is it intentional? Like, I mean, obviously most of the time it's intentional. But are you going in there like, I'm about to definitely hit this dude in the nuts, right? It might just happen in the process and you're frustrated and you hit him and it's like, all right, bro, relax, you need to calm down. You calm down, it doesn't happen again. But if you do it a second time, then it's like, all right, bro, yo, you know what? You're done. You know what I'm saying? Like, like homeboy, what, what fight that was last night? The referee had to call it. He's like, yo, all right, you, too many illegal moves, bro. You're done. You know what I mean? So, so with this one, though, is it's his explanation afterwards that has me like at the very least the commission needs to review this because you're literally telling them like yeah I intentionally was doing it you know I was pulling a Mike Tyson and you thought it was funny that's why I'm like bro as a professional you can't do that you know like and on top of that this day was his like I just don't understand who is his PR team like Somebody should have been like, yo, bro, they're gonna ask you about that bite, chill out, descend the third, whatever, whatever, yada, yada. He didn't do that, man. So, but I'm gonna say during the fight, I wouldn't have disqualified him during the fight because you know, what I mean, it could have been anything. If anything, it could have been like I was talking to him, I wasn't really trying to intentionally bite him, I was just talking trash in his ear, or something. But at the end, when you when you said that on the microphone, that's when it's like, yo, fam, I can't help you, I can't defend you. So, yeah, I would say if he gets disqualified, he gets disqualified, you know, but it should be a learning lesson. If if they reverse the decision, it should be a learning lesson to Belinga. Keep your mouth shut, man. If you're going to do something slimy, keep it to yourself. You ain't got to broadcast it to the world. That's like these rappers nowadays with drill music snitching on themselves. He literally just snitched on himself in front of all these Puerto Rican fans. It was kind of reckless. Yeah, keep it to yourself <clears throat> or don't tell G about it. Because if you tell G, <laughs> the world's going to know. <laughs> G Kashi. All right, go ahead, dog. Um, no, I wouldn't have had disqualified. I would have taken a point, though, and I would have gave him a, a real tongue lashing. Like, cut the... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. so. You know? And uh, as far as the commission go, I would definitely throw down a fine. You know, just to let people know, and, and they don't start a thing to let people know that they can take things matters into their own hands. So I'll definitely drop down the fine between, you know, uh, ten to fifty thousand. You know, depending on how I'm feeling that day. You know, and uh, and keep it moving, so he knows not to uh, behave like this. You know, uh, in a way it hurts. It's in the pockets. You know, and just you know, I bet he'll never do that again. I think it was just a moment of frustration. With the young 
All right. T B E. Uh disqualified, no, but him trying to reenact that egregious moment from the Tyson Holyfield fight should have led to him having a point deducted. But I, I don't know if the ref saw it anything or how, like what what happened because it was like it wasn't really like there was no really like breakup or like like or like a stop in the match when that happened. So uh he should be he should have been um the, the um he shot she should have lost a point, but since that didn't happen, once the videos get out and he's just laughing about it, I think he should be fine at for fine uh at least a hundred thousand for that because that 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 that's not cool, yo. We should that's not allowed in the sport of boxing, even if you think it, even even if he doesn't think how serious it is. But that when Mike Tyson did it, it was very egregious, and I don't think you should um ever do that again, Edgar. Yeah, look, no, he shouldn't have been disqualified because precedent has already been set with this issue. For example, if Mike Tyson wasn't disqualified when it happened, he got two points taken away from the great Mills Lane. That's a two-point deduction from Mike Tyson. Two points, right? He got two points deducted from him from the great Mills Lane, and then he got disqualified when he did it a second time. Um, Ivan Redcatch, right? He bit Danny Garcia. I think that's the guy who bit Danny Garcia. He didn't get, um, yeah, I think it was Ivan. He didn't get uh, disqualified. He got fined afterwards, right? And even, I think, there was a fight on top rank. I know it was a top rank fight. The dude bit, it was another bite situation, and it wasn't a DQ, right? So in this case, we're not even talking about a bite, G. We're talking about an attempted bite. Because he was unsuccessful. Yeah. So he didn't actually bite him. It's an attempted bite. Um, but still, nevertheless, I think he should be fine. So naturally, Ned's 100,000 is ridiculous because he didn't even bite him. You know what I mean? And you know what people say, like they were going to do something and they didn't really do it. I don't know if he really wanted to bite him or if he wanted to make him think he was going to bite him. You can't really get into a person's mind. Right. What I would say is he didn't he didn't actually complete the act. So something should be done afterwards, whether it's a fine or whether it's like, bro, your conduct was, you know, unbecoming and you put people at risk. And if you do that again, you're going to be suspended. Right. To me, that would be the, the big, the best thing. Right. You kind of like a suspended sentence, almost like when you tell them, like, look, you repeat this behavior again, you're going to be suspended for two years, period. End of discussion. So now, next time he's in the ring, he's thinking like, yo, if I do this, I'm going to be out of boxing for two years. And he already knows that going in. So to me, I think that's that's that to me would be more of a behavior that would deter that type of behavior. Now, getting into Edgar Belenga, see, this is the problem. They're comparing you to Miguel Cotto, who has no history of this ever. Miguel Cotto never did anything like that. And... Felix Trinidad did low blow Fernando Vargas. That was after he just got knocked down, and it was strategic to give himself more rest. It was a classic veteran move. You understand? But it wasn't a bite. And anyone who's anyone understands what he was doing. You understand? So um, Trinidad didn't have that moment. What would you say, uh, Dog Bill? Yeah, we knew what he was doing at that moment, breaking my heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, Vargas was coming on, man. That's what that's that that's what's still one of the greatest fights ever. But the point is, Trinidad didn't just do it in a fight where like they were up on scorecards. No, he just got dropped. Vargas was coming on, and he's like, yo, I gotta break this momentum. So I gotta do this. So that's when he that's when he went low. But with the exception of that, I can't think of a time where Felix Trinidad went dirty. So, or even try to bite anyone. You're not even talking about a low blow. What G pointed out, I did see that punch, G, where he hit him, like, on the thigh. Mm -hmm. And then, like, Berlanga, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. Not only was your performance lackluster, but nobody wants to see someone bite someone in the air on national television. Like, free national television television when mike tyson did what he did it was a pay-per-view bout so at least you had to pay to watch that 
Don't get it twisted. There were a lot of kids watching that. I was one of them. <laughs> but the point I'm making is, like, national television, any kid could have, like, any kid. That's like access to the homes and people watching that. They don't want to see someone biting someone. And the greatest thing that happened to Edgar Belenga was he was unsuccessful in that attempt. But if Ed Edgar Belenga was successful in that attempt, it could have ruined his career, and he doesn't even realize that. Top rank put all their money in you. They put all this promotion in you. Made you the headliner on Madison Square Garden, showing on the worldwide leader in sports, and you bite someone's ear on national television, live national television, you would have ended your career. See, because you missed, it's something that'll blow over. It's something that never something that never happened. So, like a few months from now, people aren't going to be talking about it. But Belenga's anger and his tactics need to need to stop. I'm someone who thinks he's been critique he's being critiqued harshly based on where he is in the sport. He's being, you know, promoted as the next Puerto Rican great. And a lot of people don't see that in him. I mean, I'll be honest, I don't see him as the next great thing either, but it doesn't mean he can't grow into that. He does have potential, but still, he's not that right now. But that biting business, that punching low business. That even after the bell, like doing all that, after the fight's over, that's the type of thing that's going to make people not like you even more. And, and, and to be honest with you, those are the type of antics that are going to get you off of nationally televised cards. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know how to behave, if you don't know how to act, nobody's going to want to invest money in you. The worst thing that could have happened last night was you actually succeeded with that bite. And because it would have been the talk... It would have been on all news cycles. It would have been everything for all the wrong reasons. And everyone who invested in you, everyone who believed in you, everyone who, they would have dropped you, bro. So you need to get that together. I don't know what the hell is going on with Edgar Belenga, but like he, he, has, he has a lot of soul searching to do and he has a lot of soul searching to do fast. He needs to figure out what type of fighter he's going to be. Is he going to try to be Devin Haney or is he going to be a knockout puncher who goes forward and is defensively responsible? But then he needs to figure out, do you want to be that kind of guy who, who people don't know if they can let kids watch your fight because you might hit someone low, you might bite them? Yo, Tyson survived all that in your mind because you don't remember back in the days when it actually happened because you were nine when Miguel Cotto was fighting at Madison Square Garden, right? So I don't even know if you were alive when Mike Tyson actually fought even in the Holyfield. But that hurt his career tremendously, bro. Years later, Mike Tyson was able to recover from a lot of things. But you bite someone in that ring, you can kiss your career goodbye. Understand that. So I just want to say, like, in closing, he shouldn't have been disqualified. But there should be some harsh warnings moving forward, maybe even a, a fine. And he should know that if you were successful in doing that, your career would have been over. Let us know how you feel in the comment section. Please like and subscribe. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And please check out our podcast on all major streaming services. Elevation out now on all major streaming, uh, all major streaming services. Also, tune in with us June 14th, where we do the listening party for the Brothers album.